day and use me. If you have your Bibles, I would like to go to Romans chapter 7 and verse 15. It says, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that I do, I not. For what I hate, that do I. One translation said it like this, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. And then if you would flip your Bible to Philippians 3 and 13, it says, Brother, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth into those things which are before. God, I'm asking you to anoint me today. I'm asking you to bless this message. God, I bless them that hear it. In Jesus' name. The Apostle Paul said that what he understood was that every time that he would try to do what was right, he found himself doing what was wrong. And then he said, forgetting those sayings are what's behind me, but I am looking forward to the prize. What he was saying is I've got to forget the past. As a matter of fact, I can't even dwell on the present right now, but I've got to think about the future. And for a little while tonight, I want to preach to you when your past becomes, when your present, when your past becomes your present, but don't let it become your future. I had a little blip up here on my iPad, so it'll be all right. But the Apostle Paul said he understood what it was to make mistakes. He understood what it was to drop the ball. And the Bible said that he said, what I'm going to do is forget about those things that are behind me. I'm even going to forget about right now, but I'm going to look toward the prize. The simply when he said, I'm going to look toward the prize, it meant that when a runner was running, he wasn't looking around to the right or the left, but he was looking straight on to a prize. But then the Apostle Paul said, when I would do what's right, I want to do what's right, but somehow I can't get it right. I always do what's wrong. I want to tell somebody today, you don't have to allow your past to become your future. It might seem like that your past has become your present. It seems like the same failures that you did in your past. It seems like you're doing right now. But I'm here to tell you, if you can find a place and you can get on your knees and you can cry out to God, it don't have to be your future. You don't have to allow your past to ruin the rest of your life. But right now, you need to find a place, in a secret place with the Most High God and understand that He can change you. But you've got to cry out to Him. Don't let your past become your future. Also, the Bible tells us of a man named Peter that the first place where Jesus met him was he was fishing with the rest of the disciples. And Jesus came by and he began to follow Jesus. And then one day, Peter wasn't spiritual. He was carnal at this point. And we've all been there. Some of us even feel like we're there right now. But Peter simply said something and the Lord simply called him a devil. It's pretty bad when God calls you a devil. But what I'm trying to make a point tonight is, it seemed like Peter's past was following even to the present. And then Peter finds himself at the last supper with Jesus. And Jesus needed his disciples support at that time. He spoke up and said, this night, one of you will betray me. Peter, in his boldness, 
Peter and his carnality, I guess you could say, but I wonder how many of us have been there. And when Jesus needed us to melt, we fell him. There goes Peter. Hey, Jesus, the rest of them might fall away from you, but I will die with you rather than betray you. And Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, before tonight's over with, you're not going to deny me once, but you're going to do it three times. And they went on, and you know the story. That the disciples were with Jesus. And here came Judas up to Jesus, gave him the kiss of betrayal. And they were fixing to take Jesus away. Peter, what are you going to do? It seemed like your past is following you everywhere you go. Peter grabs a sword, not really thinking, and whacks off the ear of the high priest's servant. Peter, you are just attempted murder. You failed again, Peter. Peter, it seemed like your past is becoming your present. Peter goes on, and he watches from afar, and he goes to the place which is called the common hall, where they begin to beat Jesus, where they begin to pronounce the judgment of crucifying. And a lady speaks up to Peter and says, hey, ain't you one of the disciples? And Peter, come on, Peter, get it right this time. No, 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 I'm not one of them. I didn't know if I wasn't a disciple. It wasn't me. Down in his mind, he said to Peter, why did you say that? You failed again. It's becoming the present for you, Peter. It used to be your past, but now you're doing it again. You're failing God again and again and again. You wake up in the morning wanting to do what's right. But you failed God again. And Peter walks another few steps away, and another one comes up to him. Hey, or should you want them to follow Jesus? Again, Peter, you've got another chance. You've got another, you've got another try right now. Come on. Do a try, Peter. Do a try. Scared. It's like me and you probably be. Peter said, no, I don't know him. Oh, Peter, here it comes again. You're failing God again. Peter walks out. Woman's hands in the fire. Said some other one said, Wait a minute. Peter, you do know him. You already follow him because your speech, it betrays you, Peter. You've got a mark upon you, Peter, that lets us know you were a disciple of his. You did follow him. Can I tell you, backslider? Can I tell you that I'm lukewarm? Can I tell you that I'm really struggling right now? You got a mark on you that lets people know, hey, you've been with Jesus. Anytime you've ever been with Jesus, you will have that mark. You will never be able to erase that. No matter what party you go to, no matter what you do, something, somehow, some situation going to come up and that mark, it decides who you are. You've got this signature of God. You've got that knowledge. When you're with your buddies and they're talking about stuff that's going on in life, your mind will go back to, wait a minute. That's in the Bible. These things have got to happen before Jesus comes. I'm here to tell you, don't let your past become your future. Peter, you just messed up. Instead of throwing in the towel, Peter, to go and commit suicide like Judas. The Bible said that Peter ran away and he wept bitterly. Up to this point, I don't never read where Peter wept bitterly because of the failures that he did. But this time, Peter wept bitterly. I believe what he was saying is I might have failed you, God, but I'm not going to allow the past to ruin my future. It might be in my present right now, but I'm not allowing it to control me. You see, your past was five minutes ago. The present is right now, and the future is in the next five minutes. It's what you do with it. Peter cried to God. Judas committed suicide. Peter, what are you going to do? 
According to the Bible, I don't even read what Peter was there when Jesus was crucified. No doubt things are rolling over in his mind. Oh, I failed him, I failed him, I failed him, I failed him. Then Peter, the next thing he heard was Jesus had risen. And not only that, but they told them to go tell Peter also. Make it plain and simple. You go tell the disciples and tell Peter. Go tell Peter his mind said, I wonder why. He made it express it to me. He expressed it said to Peter. I'm the failure. But yet if you read your Bible, the Bible said that that day that the disciples and Peter, every one of them ran away from Jesus. Now you find Peter's in the boat with the rest of the disciples. But the few of the disciples, I believe, was more at the beginning of Peter's ministry. When he started following Jesus, he was fishing with these disciples. And now he's back with them. He simply said, I can't handle this anymore. I will go fishing. And they said, you know what? We're going with him. All of this stuff is blowing on mine. And then Peter is in the boat. Jesus speaks. And John says, Peter, that's the Lord. It really is him. Peter jumps out of the boat. Approximately 300 feet from land. He swims on. And the Bible don't say that he spoke to Jesus. But he got the fire going ready for them to bring the fish so they could have a meal. No doubt in his mind, it's going over into his mind. And I failed him. 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 Peter, you're not going to let it become the future, though. You're not running away. You got the fire going. You're going to sit there. You're going to take whatever you got coming. After the Bible said they got done eating, that Jesus looked to Peter and he said, Peter, do you love me? He didn't bring up his past. He didn't bring up his, future, his present. But he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I do. He said, they go feed my lambs. I'm not worried about the past. I'm not worried about right now, Peter. I'm worried about your future. And now, without another word, Jesus said it again, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord. He said, go feed my sheep. Peter probably thinking in his mind, oh my goodness, the last time that I was asked questions regarding Jesus, I failed him. And I failed him miserably. Peter! Oh no, here comes the third question again. I'm going to fail him. I'm going to fail him. I'm going to fail him. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. And I'm most you know it all, God. You know who I am. You know the failures that I have done. You know I, I try to commit murder. You know that I hate said some stupid stuff. And you even called me a devil. You know that I stood up and I cut somebody's ear off. You know that I ran away when you needed me the most. You know that not only did I deny you, but I cursed. What I said was, if I'm not telling the truth of not knowing him, then let God curse me. You know these things, Jesus. Not me. Not this the lady. Jesus said, Peter, then go feed my sheep. I want to tell somebody today. You may feel like your past has become your present. It feels like that every step you take is the wrong one. It feels like every word you say is the wrong one. It feels like you sin and you sin and you sin and you sin. The devil wants you to throw in the towel. But the Bible said that if you do sin, you have an advocate with Jesus Christ for righteousness. An advocate is a helper. An advocate would go before the judge and he would help you. I'm here to tell you, find a place of prayer like Peter did and don't let your past become your future. And you know the rest of the story. The Bible 
Bible said on the day of Pentecost, the Bible said that Peter stood up and he said, hey, they are not drunk as you suppose, but hey, they are filled with the Holy Ghost. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Peter, do not let it take your future, are you, Peter? You grab a hold of what you grab a hold of the night when you wept bitterly. Now, Peter, you got it. And that's the only way to me you can get it is if we fall on our face before God. He understands our failures. He understands that we are flesh. But he also understands if we can get in his presence, the fullness of joy, if we can get in his presence, the chains will be broken. If we can get in his presence, then he will protect us. And one of the most famous scriptures is Acts 2 and 38. Peter began to preach, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm here to tell somebody that you do not have to allow your past to become your future. You might have allowed it to become your present. But it's time to stand up like Peter did and weep bitterly. Get it under the blood. And I promise you, God can help you. I pray that I've helped somebody today. I love you, Carmine. Love you, New Life Apostolic Church. Pray for you guys. You pray for me. And don't let your past become your future. God bless you.